What's up, y'all? I'm ah, so excited for today's topic. I'm so excited for today's topic. Literally, like, Obviously, you guys know the bread and butter of my channel in general is about self-love, empowerment, women's confidence, etc. But I don't know, I've never just done like a sit down straight like the truth about this ish, okay? I just want to clear up like all the misconceptions about self-love and confidence building. I want to make sure you guys know what to expect, what you can't expect. We need to get into that today, okay? We need to get to the truth, the facts and the facts only. Because a lot of people be capping and I don't like that. So that's exactly what we're going to do today. It's just so important to me for you guys to know like the truth behind things like this because there's so many different like representations of what self-love and confidence really is online and I want to make sure you know what it really is and what it should be for you or what it could be for you. You know? So let's just get into this. But first, if you've not subscribed to my channel yet, what are you doing? We're going to give you a couple seconds to do that. Mm. Did you do it? Good. Now you watch the video. Welcome to our family. Also, follow me on my socials. This week you can participate in polls, all that fun stuff, or whatever. Let's just get into this. I feel like self-love and confidence in general is just such a broad, like, term. Like, it's just such a broad topic, and there's so much that falls underneath it. So this is probably going to have to be, like, a multiple-part thing. We're just going to start where I feel like we can start. First thing that I want to clear up is that once you have, like, increased your self-love and your confidence that doesn't mean that it's gonna stay there progress is not linear i don't want you guys to have the misconception that you know what like once i do this this and this and i'm confident i'm just gonna be confident forever and i'll never have to feel this way again no you're gonna feel that way again you're gonna feel that insecurity sometimes you're gonna feel that sadness that i don't really like my body today i don't really like my face today i don't love my hair like you're gonna feel that again and again and again throughout the rest of your life, literally. 9.999 times out of 10. I don't personally know anybody that doesn't still have days where they feel off about themselves or their confidence is a little shaky or something might happen that might trigger that confidence and test how strong it really is. Like maybe you thought you were like this confident superwoman ah, 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 after you do all this work, right? And then your man cheats on you. Now what? That might trigger those thoughts that you haven't had before. That might trigger the Am I enough? Why did he have to go out and do that? Am I not pretty enough? Is her body better than mine? Boom, 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 boom. And you're gonna start spiraling. Now granted, you might not. Instantly, you might be like, you know what? This has nothing to do with me. That has everything to do with him and nothing to do with me. I know my worth, etc. You might be that one. And that's beautiful. I love that for you. But a lot of times, that initial hit triggers those insecurities that you thought you once healed. And unfortunately, no matter how much we heal certain wounds, it's very easy to reopen them. That area is a little more vulnerable sometimes. So that's like a main misconception of like, okay, I'm gonna have it and it's gonna stick forever. You need to understand that you're gonna have bad days and you don't need to fall into the hole of like, oh my God, I've completely retracted. Like I took two steps forward and 10 back. No, you didn't. You're just having a bad day or a bad week or a bad month or whatever it is. You can return to that level of confidence, but just know you're gonna have those dips. You're gonna have the shifts. You're gonna feel like the baddest mm, ever one day and then you might feel like ew i do not want to look in the mirror today that's okay another key thing that's like truthful about self-love is that you have to recognize that the first word is self it has everything to do with you and you only okay you're never gonna reach that level of self-love that you want to reach if you're still so fixated on everybody else and that goes two ways one way being comparison and another way being fixated on everyone else feeling about you, how you feel about you. And that's an issue that I see a lot of people have. So for example, you might come off as like a super confident person who has all of this going for themselves and this, this and that, but you don't feel confident if other people aren't noticing how great you are. You have to be confident in who you are without needing other people to validate that for you. Everybody loves reassurance. Everybody can get that from time to time. But if your confidence or your level of self-love doesn't feel full, if other people aren't telling you how great you are, you've built your self-love based off of other people's words you built your self-love based off of other people's actions and that's something that you're gonna have to now like step back and fix and you can't do that because people's opinions are always gonna change one day they might think you're pretty and the next day they might be like eh, you know what i guess this she ain't all that or one day they might like you and say you're beautiful and the next day they don't like you and be like and that's why you ugly it changes like this and that's why your opinion of yourself has to be your opinion of yourself because other people move with the wind you have to be the person that's most sure of yourself that makes other people more sure of you as well now in the lens of comparison don't do do the whole like, okay, I'm gonna love myself once I look like her, right? And then build your self-love journey based off of going to the gym and getting that certain body whatever body type that might be. Because once again, that's not you building your self-love 
on yourself. You're building it off of somebody else, yet again. Even if you don't need that girl to tell you you're pretty, you're trying to emulate that woman to make you feel like more of a solid woman, to make you feel more attractive, to make you feel more whatever, to others, again. And you're probably doing that for one of two reasons. Either you are doing that for yourself, like, you know what, I wanna look like her because that would make me happy, or you're doing it because I wanna look like her because other people say she's pretty. I wanna look like her because she has all the guys. I wanna look like her because look at her lifestyle. And if I look like her, I'll get all that comes with her. That's not true. Do you know the amount of girls that I know have like talked to me about like, seeing the BBL bodies and seeing the Instagram models and this, this, and that, and being like, I thought that if I got that BBL, I would have that lifestyle. I would have the Birkins and the guys and the rappers and this and that, and I don't. And I'm still not happy with myself. And I've wasted how much money, and I'm not happy. Because I didn't do it for me. I did it for others. I did it for the lifestyle. I did it for the image. You're not gonna be happy like that because once again, that's you making yourself love not about yourself. Also, sidebar, whatever you see online is whatever you see online. There are a lot of people capping for the internet, I promise you. So just because you see that girl, you know, who has the body that you think is gonna bring you the men and the bad and this, this, and that. She probably don't even have all that. I'm not gonna lie to you, especially living in LA now. Girl, these be rent -a bags, these be rent -a cars, these be rent -a boyfriends, okay? So remember that always. I'm not saying everybody, I'm just saying you never know. So it, you really should be taking the internet and what you see on it with a grain, a grain of salt. A grain. So don't try to emulate, you know, like your worth and everything based off of someone else's lifestyle who nine times out of ten is probably not even really living that you will attract the lifestyle that you want for yourself by making yourself love about yourself by emulating what you want in life and by manifesting that and putting that positive energy toward yourself you will be able to receive more things not by trying to be like the next girl and again no matter how hard you work you'll never have someone else's exact body or exact face or exact what you'll never have it so if your self-love journey right now is like working towards looking like somebody else or a certain body type you're going the wrong way because that's never gonna happen you could literally be like so close and still have such an amazing body but because it's not the exact same you still won't be satisfied you're still not them you know what i'm saying your body is your body do with what you want for your body for yourself nobody else if there's something that you want to work on for yourself let it be because you're looking at yourself in the mirror and you're reflecting not because you're looking at some girl on instagram and comparing your body comparison is a thief of joy and that is what's going to halt your self-love journey and that's the truth these are facts okay these are facts that's a complete misconception that if i just if i just work hard and i look like this girl then i'm gonna love myself no you're not and it might make you feel even worse about yourself so you can be like you know i put in this year of working out in the gym and this is this and i still don't feel any better not at all or let's say you put on this work because you thought that you were going to get more attention from guys and stuff and that would make you love yourself and you don't get the attention from guys now what now what you just put in all that work and you're still not getting no attention and now what where you made the mistake is instead of doing that you should have been working on being comfortable with not getting attention because you don't need it to feel fulfilled that's where your attention should have been not on the attention of others self-love has to also do with how you respect yourself and what boundaries you have within your friendships and relationships. Self-love is not always about what you look like on the outside or how you feel about your personal attributes. Self-love is also about respecting yourself in whatever situation it may be. Self-love is also not spreading yourself thin for people to be liked because you don't have that self-love. You have to try to recognize those behaviors and patterns too as well in your journey because you could be working on, you know, falling in love with your outward appearance and really that was never the issue. Really, it was just you need people to like you to feel loved and when they don't, you spread yourself thin and you do the most to try to feel loved. You lose your morals, you lose what you stand for, you lose everything to be loved because it's trying to fill the void of love that you lack for yourself in others once again. So if you're the type that overextends yourself in friendships, if you're the type that overextends yourself in a relationship, that over forgives in friendships and relationships, that panics when somebody is upset with you, that jumps to trying to take blame and fault and fix issues immediately without even reflecting in friendships and relationships, you're or making your self-love about other people. Self-love also has to do with knowing when to walk away from something. Friendships, relationships, after how much disrespect, after how much not being listened to, not being heard, anything at all. I think a lot of you guys are also like really afraid of conflict and stuff. Everything doesn't have to be conflict. If you need something from a friendship or a relationship that that person cannot provide, remove yourself from it and that's okay. I know it feels like the end of the world sometimes doing that, but as you mature, you learn that everything doesn't have to be beef. Everything doesn't have to be conflict. When you truly love yourself, removing yourself is just that, and that's okay. Don't mistake 
respecting yourself and loving yourself for being messy or causing conflict. It's not the same thing. You're actually doing the opposite. You're actually showing yourself love and grace and showing the other person love and grace by saying, you know what? I don't wanna have Jami here and let me remove myself. Self-love. Staying where you're disrespected or tolerating disrespect is a lack of self-love for yourself because you just want them to love you. So it's like, you know what? I'll disrespect myself and I won't love myself just because I need the love from him or I need it from this friend or I need it from whoever. You'll never feel fulfilled that way. Self-love is also self-care. Think about what you're doing for others and everything during the week versus what you're doing for yourself. And also, even if you are doing things for yourself, Look at how healthy those things actually are. You need to be implementing healthy things that you're doing for yourself during your week every week. Whether that's taking a bath, lighting some candles, even cleaning, if that's for yourself, right? Just something that is for you and not for anybody else. That's self-love. That's saying, you know what? I can't even be my best self to the people around me and who need me if I don't put myself before them. And that's the truth. Do you know how quick you lose yourself and lose love for yourself when you're too focused on loving everybody else? Let's think about that. How much love can you really give if you spread yourself so thin that you don't have any left to give to yourself? Ugh. Not a lot. So really, if it's not enough to motivate you to love yourself, let it be enough motivation to you that you're not loving others properly enough because you're not loving yourself. Let that be the motivation until you can be your own motivation. Self-love is also about embracing the parts of yourself that you don't like. And that can be split up in multiple different ways. One way in the way of being like, okay, let's say there's certain traits you don't like about yourself, right? Maybe you're impatient. Maybe you get frustrated really quickly with people or whatever it might be. Self-love is not being like, oh, I hate this part about myself. I gotta fix it. Uh, uh, uh. That's not self-love because that's not being gracious with yourself which is what you do when you love somebody like you should love yourself giving grace to yourself is saying no i don't like these parts about myself now let me embrace them and figure out how i can be better how i can improve this i'm gonna enjoy the journey of me going from impatient to patient i'm gonna enjoy the journey of me learning not to be as frustrated as quickly with people and i'm loving myself and i'm proud of myself for being able to identify that and to be working on it i love this effort i love the journey of learning to be better no matter how tough it is that's self-love. Y'all be doing like, oh, I hate this about myself. Uh, uh, uh. No, let me use the other traits that I love about myself to improve this trait that I don't really love so much. That's being gracious and loving yourself. And that's what a lot of you guys are lacking. And that's what we're not going to do no more. We're not doing that. Now, on the other side of accepting things you don't like about yourself, we can go the physical attribute route as well. We can go the, you know what? I don't like my stomach. I don't like my birthmarks. I don't like the da 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 da. I hate this about myself. I hate that. That's not self love. Self love is looking at something and saying, you know what? I don't think I express enough love to this part of my body in the way that I do other parts of my body. Now, how can I embrace this more than I have in the past? It's speaking kinder to yourself. It's being kinder to yourself. It's being more gracious to yourself. It's not, oh, I hate this part of my body. I just wish it was gone. Da da da. It's, hmm. I wonder why I don't show this part of my body as much love that I do to others. And it's probably conditioning. It's probably societal. Let's get into that. You've probably learned to not like your stomach if it's not this big because that's the societal standard, right? So that's now you assuming that because you don't look like that, that you can't be happy with your body. Maybe your body wasn't meant to be that size, mama. Maybe it's not. We're not all built in the same frame. We have different frames of bodies for different reasons. Those are the things you have to start thinking about. Learn that you don't have to conform to what society says is pretty, to what society says is acceptable. You know why? Because society is always evolving, so that pretty and acceptable whatever it is, is gonna change again, as it always does. It always does. I know you guys can remember like early 2000s, like Mean Girls time, like just all that type of stuff. Having a big butt was like, oh, I'm fat. Oh my God, if you said somebody had a big butt, it was like, oh, what an insult. No, I don't. It was one of those. Now look, it's like, I just want a big butt. I just want a little. The culture is always gonna shift. The standards are always gonna shift. So if you're always hyper fixated on not loving things about yourself that don't fit within the standard, it'll probably fit within the next generation. So you can't keep chasing what society thinks is pretty. You have to think you're pretty because we're not all gonna look the same. And that's a good thing. What you bring to the table that's different from the norm is why you're special. A way that I found a lot of self love about my body is by looking at it as a temple, looking at it as something that allows me to be great every day. I think we have to take like this sexual weight 
off of our bodies and that's where that self-love can be found you can find self-love for your body in the way that i love that you wake up and keep me alive every day i love that you allow me to do whatever i need to do during my day speaking that life into your body and looking at it more as a vessel that allows you to be great from within right that allows you to find your purpose in life that allows you to do whatever you're passionate about doing every day that allows you to love on that person that you're in love with right now that allows you to go to that job that you might like or that you might not like because you're working to get where you can like and that will allow you to be there one day you know what i'm saying it's speaking that positivity and shifting the frame on how we view ourselves especially as women it's so crucial to not view our bodies only for others pleasure or to not view our bodies only sexually or sensually to an extent i can't even blame us because that's really what we've been looked at like it's like women are here and women are sexy and women are this this and that because they have this body so when we don't fit into body norms it can affect our self-love and that's why i'm telling you stop listening to like massage noir of like women are only good for their bodies because once you fall into that that's a life of misery that is the trap that we, we could really get into that that is the trap that misogyny in general has pushed us into so that we lack the self-love for ourselves so we accept more bs from our husbands so we don't feel confident enough in ourselves to go out and get it on our own so we don't feel confident enough to be the head of the household you know what i'm saying like these things have been put in place for a reason and that's why it's our job in this generation to break it Whew. I'd say that quick. Don't fall for the, the traps of only feeling valuable when your body is valued. You value your body and that should be enough. And you value your body for reasons more than what it can provide to a man. What does that tell you? Nothing. You value your body because of what it does for you every day and how it allows you to be great. That's why you should value your body. Not because of what it might do for some man or for a woman or for anybody who identifies as anything. Okay. I love that sexuality has now become something of empowerment for us. I do love that. Like, for example, like WAP and stuff like that. But I also want us to make sure we have empowerment outside of that as well. I don't want us to get too hyper-focused on feeling empowered only through our sexuality because we're so much more than that. We are women. We literally breathe life into this earth literally like literally so don't let them like push you into thinking that sexuality is your only superpower it's not you are the superpower in yourself you existing is the superpower self-love is removing yourself from all outside noise right it's removing yourself from what men say what your friends relationships say what the internet says what society says it, it's removing yourself from all of that and having a relationship with yourself for yourself. That's what self-love is. That's making sure, you know what? I don't wanna hear anybody else's opinion about me but my own. And if my opinion about me isn't as strong as it needs to be, what do I need to do to get it there? That's self-love. That's putting yourself first. That's putting your needs above your wants. Because a lot of times that little void in us craves that attention from other people craves you know those negative behaviors that we might accept in friendships and relationships so that we could feel loved it craves going on the internet and comparing ourselves to other bodies it craves all of that that's what it wants but when you love yourself and you put yourself love in front of everything you go after what you need you know you don't need to be comparing yourself to these people on the internet you know you don't need to be accepting what you've been accepting in friendships and relationships you know you don't need any of that so you do what you need to do which is putting yourself first putting the work in to make sure you don't fall victim to the things that that void wants does that make sense being able to decipher your needs and wants is a super duper critical skill as well so make sure if that's not something that you've worked on yet in your self-love journey that's something you need to start working on right now let me reapply uh-huh better self-love is also just self-evaluation like it can be very very uncomfortable to evaluate ourselves and where we lack right super uncomfortable nobody wants to sit there and look at the things that they don't like about themselves or nobody wants to sit there and be like where am i lacking as a human being it's not fun but when you love yourself you know that that's necessary and that goes back to what we were just talking about about what you need and what you want you don't want to do that but you know you need to do that so self-love is putting yourself in positions you don't really want to be in because you know you need to self-love is also going after what you want in life self-love is putting yourself before your boyfriend and i've been there let's go let's let's do that i've put my own needs on the back burner because i wanted his needs to be more important and then i learned i'm not loving myself by trying to love this man more than he loves me to then make him love me more do you know what i'm saying that's really what we need to get into that's really a lack of self-love you're thinking if i love this man this hard he'll eventually love me just as hard and that's not how it works nine times out of ten that man is going to take all that love that you're giving him and run with it and then you're left feeling emptier than ever now you really don't value yourself because he didn't value you even when you gave him the world you can give 
give somebody the world and a half but if they're not ready and if they don't love themselves enough to value what love you're bringing to the table it doesn't matter and how i'm saying if they don't love themselves enough to recognize your love that's because they're stuck in their wants and not their needs they're not mature enough they haven't experienced enough they haven't matured in their self-love journey enough to recognize i need someone who loves me like this but i want whatever they want there not even just women i want to just focus on myself i don't care about her i want other women i want to da -da 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 -da. you know what i'm saying they want to do those things and they don't recognize what they need so you can give them everything in the world but they're not looking so they don't care you're really emptying your cup into someone else's cup who has holes at the bottom he's not holding none of that love none of what you're pouring into him because he don't value it you're pouring into a damn near strainer at this point you're wasting the love that you have for yourself on somebody else who does not value it nor do they deserve it so that's where you say you know what i want this man to love me how i love him i want to give him all my love but it's draining the love that I have for myself because none of it is reciprocated. So I'm gonna give all that that I wanna give him back to myself because that's what I need, okay? That's the truth about self-love. Those are the issues that I see come over and over and over again within y'all. Like, over and over again. These are the same concepts that we all go through and that's why I needed to make this because y'all need to hear this. Also, self-love is not saying I love myself and I know myself and I'm a strong woman so I'm gonna stick beside the man that's disrespecting me and that don't love me like I love him. That's not self-love. I see that narrative over and over again like I stayed because I'm strong. I stayed because da da da. No you didn't. You stayed because you don't love yourself and you think staying is gonna make him love you. You don't love yourself enough to walk away. You love that man more than you love yourself. You love whatever he's doing for you more than you love yourself. You know you don't need him, but you want him. And that's because your self-love is not strong enough for you to walk away towards what you need. Let's go there. Having self-love and being a strong woman has nothing to do with staying in disrespect at all. And that's exactly the narrative that like men wanna push in general to make you feel like that's what you need to be doing. Like, oh yeah, I put her through hell and back. Oh yeah, you know, she stuck beside me while I was the worst while I was dog that's embarrassing that's not self-love and that man don't love you to even be able to say that out of his mouth and feel that comfortably to feel like yeah I put this girl through hell she's still here it's a joke that's not you loving yourself at all and deep down you know that but you're trying to lie to yourself to try to mask your wants as needs you're doing this to try to mask the fact that you don't love yourself enough to walk away you can't fool me baby you can't fool me self-love is not you know just being like I'm pretty I'm the best I'm this is that's not self-love Self-love is being gracious with yourself, is being patient with yourself, is loving yourself from within, is appreciating yourself, is just in awe of your greatness inside and out, and then it exudes. And that makes it easier for you to love what's on the outside of your body because you are so, so in love with who you are on the inside. You have to know you from within and fall in love with you. Get to know you. It's very difficult to love yourself when you do not know yourself. So a lot of y'all, don't know yourselves at all. If I asked you guys to name five things you enjoy doing or five things that you like, it might be difficult for you. Cause you don't know yourself and you've never taken the time to get to know yourself. You've taken the time to get to know everybody else but yourself. And that's why you love everybody else but yourself. Mm. Get to know you, do activities, go outside, do something. Get to know you so you can really know who you are and then fall in love with that. You don't know yourself. How can you love somebody you don't know? You might love certain things about you, but you'll never embody that full self love because you do not know yourself. What do you like to do? What do you not like to do? What makes you feel sad? What makes you feel happy? What makes you feel safe? What makes you feel scared? Ask yourself these damn questions because when you don't ask yourself these questions, you don't know yourself at all. I bet you can answer what makes your boyfriend scared. I bet you know what makes your boyfriend happy but you don't know what makes yourself scared or happy now do you hmm it's the fact that you put everybody else above yourself and everybody else is of more importance than you for whatever reason that is it's probably trauma based which is a whole nother topic but it's getting to the root of why and then learning that you are just as important as the people you love and you cannot love them hard enough if you don't love yourself harder okay okay so this was quite a little chit chat hopefully you guys got some good gems out of this let's have a conversation in the comments make sure you like comment share subscribe to your post notifications on you got a lot to do you better get to it and i will see y'all in my next one